Hi, my name is Harlan. Welcome to the H. Matricon Mechanical Engineering Channel. Today, we will discuss part 3 of Vibration Analysis, a predictive maintenance tool for condition monitoring. This topic deals mostly in detail with about uh, mass and balance in rotating equipment. What is unbalance? Unbalance happens when the mass center line of a shaft or a rotor does not coincide with its geometric, geometric center line. And unbalance comprises most, almost half of all machinery problems. There are three types of unbalance. The first one is static unbalance. Second one is couple unbalance. And the third one is dynamic unbalance. Static unbalance involves only one force. Static because it can be observed at rest. The gravity turns the rotor until the heavy portion reaches 6 o'clock position. So we have a sketch here of a rotor. We have the disc, the shaft, the reference mark here in green. We have the unbalanced mass of M sub 1. And uh, we have the eccentricity E, and uh, the shaft rotates at omega radians per second. And if you place the unbalanced disc on a static balancer, you will notice that the heavy portion will always go down to 6 o'clock position because of gravity. Same is true with this type of balancer, the heavy portion goes at 6 o'clock. So, it, unbalance can be best explained uh, using a mathematical model. For instance, you have a machinery or an equipment having a total mass of M2 and you place an unbalanced mass of M1 sub at a distance of E from the center of the axis. So, you have the total mass now will be M1 sub plus M2, sub where M1 sub can also be expressed as a ratio of... Uh, the total mass uh, by mu times m and uh, the machinery or the equipment rotates at omega radians per second and as it rotates it, uh, it can vibrate in this manner along the x-axis and then uh, it is mounted on two springs each having a spring constant or spring stiffness of k over 2 and we have also a damper having a damping constant of c So the centrifugal force generated by this mass imbalance is equal to m sub 1 times v squared over e. And uh, since v is equal to omega times e and m sub 1 equals mu times m, so the centrifugal force is equal to mu times m, e times omega squared. And therefore the governing differential equation can be written as m times the second derivative of x with respect to time plus C times the derivative of X with respect to time, plus uh, the spring constant K times X will be equal to uh, the quantity mu M E omega squared quantity sine quantity omega times T. And there are two components to the solution of the differential equation. You have the complementary solution, which represents the transient component and we also have the particular solution which represents the steady state solution. We are not interested in transient, we are only interested in the steady state solution. So hence sub p, x sub p will be equal to capital X sine quantity omega t minus pi. Now where x, capital X is the amplitude of the vibration signal and pi is the phase. It follows that the first derivative of x sub p will be equal to omega capital X cosine quantity omega t minus pi and the second derivative of x sub p will be equal to negative omega squared capital X sine omega t quantity omega t minus pi. Substituting in the differential equation and rearranging terms uh, we get this 
expression here. We get this new equation. And just by looking at it, uh, we notice that uh, on the left side, you have the sine function here and another cosine here and a cosine here. But on the right side, there's only sine function. Yeah. So uh, we can say that this value here is equal to this value on the right side. And this one, the cosine is, since you don't have a cosine on the right side, this one is zero. So this one will be zero. So henceforth, the amplitude will be equal to mu times m times e omega squared all over the square root of uh, the quantity squared of k minus m omega squared uh, plus the square of the quantity of uh, c omega. And the angle pi is equal to the inverse tangent of uh, c times omega all over k minus m omega squared. So going back to the static and balance, on the first position you can see that um, at the start of the rotation, you can see that the heavy portion is at the 6 o'clock position. So at the start of the motion, uh, the centrifugal force acts downward and 180 degrees after it rotates to position number 2, the heavy portion now is at 12 o'clock position, so the centrifugal centrifugal force acts upward here. So as a result, as it vibrates, you can have a an up and down motion, up and down motion, and then a vibration. Couple and balance involves two equal forces, 180 degrees apart. That's why it's called couple. Two equal forces, 180 degrees apart. This causes the rotor to appear balance at rest. Hence it cannot be measured at rest. During rotation, the forces move the rotor in opposite directions at the respective ends of the shaft. So we can explain this better in a drawing. The rotor wobbles, producing a 180 degree out of phase readings from opposite ends of the shaft. For instance, you have this rotor below, and uh, you have two equal and balanced masses. 180 degrees apart and the, the one on the left side is at 6 o'clock position and the one on the right side is on the 12 o'clock position and it rotates omega radians per second. Okay. So at, it starts to rotate at the first position the centrifugal force acts downwards here and uh, at this at the right side the centrifugal force acts upwards so it tilts the shaft this way. There is a moment. And at the second position, the reverse happens. So the heavy portion is now on 12 o'clock position for the one on the left side, and the one on the right side of the rotor, uh, it's now on the 6 o'clock position. So it goes, it acts downward here, and at, this one acts upwards here, so it will tilt the other way. So you will have a rocky, some sort of a rocky motion uh, as it vibrates like this. Dynamic and balance. Dynamic and balance, as I said, is a combination of static and balance and couple and balance. It is the real world situation. What is the effect of mass and balance in rotating equipment? So you will have higher dynamic load causing bearing failure due to fatigue. Detection. How to detect? Diagnosis. You have three diagnoses. Overall vibration readings. And you have the fast Fourier uh, transform spectra. And the third is the phase measurement. So for overall vibration values, you will have a higher vibration amplitude in the radial direction as compared to the axial. Because the centrifugal force acts on the radial direction. So the radial forces are higher than the axial forces. And balance forces are the same in the horizontal and vertical positions. However, for shafts mounted horizontally, the unbalanced usually have higher readings in the horizontal plane because uh, in, the horizon in the vertical plane, motion is restricted by gravity. FFT, spectrum analysis. Vibration is once per revolution. Uh, sinusoidal in waveform. 
it appears as medium to high one times the amplitude with all harmonics below 15 percent of uh, one times for phase analysis sensor shows 90 degrees phase shift between the horizontal and the vertical positions there is no shift phase shift across the machine in the same measurement position how to correct and balance theoretically perfect balance can be obtained by locating the portions the positions of the heavy portions of the rotor and balancing can be affected by either reducing the weight of the identified heavy sections or adding counterweights opposite each heavy section at a specified plane located at a calculated radius. A running balance that is sufficiently accurate for practical applications can be achieved by means of few counterbalancing weights located with reference to unbalanced parts. Balancing corrections can be either done into two, two ways. Single plane, two plane. When to use single plane and when to use two plane. From page 6 of Mechanical Reference Handbook, Bradford Electric Company, uh, we have here a chart showing a guide on how to, when to use a single plane and when to use two plane uh, balance corrections. It depends on two factors. The first one is the length over diameter ratio, and the second one depends on the RPM value. Okay, for length over ratios less than 0.5, and in this row here, for RPM less or equal to 1,000 RPM, uh, you can use single plane balancing. But for RPM greater than 1,000 RPM, you use two plane balancing. And for the second row, the ratio of length over diameter is greater than 0.5. For RPM values less or equal to 150, uh, we use single plane balancing and uh, for RPM values greater than 150, you use two-plane balancing. I have here an example of single-plane balancing. You have a given unbalanced mass, M sub 1, 0 0.005, uh, that has sub 1, 15 degrees, and R sub 1 is uh, 4 inches, this one here. And the second mass, unbalanced mass is 0 0.01 pounds, and you have 150 degrees angle that theta and the radius is 3.5 inches and for the counterbalance you have a given radius at 4.5 inches it's given and we are to determine m sub b and theta sub b so we put it in a tabulated so m1 r1 theta sub 1 cosine of theta sine of theta m times r cosine of theta m times r sine of theta this value is here and for the second one, M sub 2, R sub 2, theta sub 2, and you have uh, the cosine of 150 degrees and sine of 150 degrees. And so the MR cosine of theta and MR sine theta will be 0 0.0175. And taking the summation of MR cosine theta, uh, the result will be negative 0 0.01099. And uh, the result here, for MR sine theta summation will be 0 0.02268. And so from this formula equation, M sub B R sub B is equal to the square root of summation of MR cosine theta quantity squared plus summation of MR sine theta quantity squared. Actually, this is just Pythagorean theorem application. Substituting values in here, you have M sub B and 4.5 is given. And this came from the table, uh, error summation, and then we can solve for M sub B is equal to 0 0.0056 pounds. Tangent theta sub B is equal to negative quantity summation MR sine theta divided by negative summation MR cosine theta and Substituting the values from the table, uh, we have a, a negative value for y and a positive value for x. So what does it mean? If y is, uh, y is negative, x is positive, this is in the fourth quadrant. 
the angle is 295 degrees 51 minutes. So for two plane balancing. So you have here showing the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, and balance mass M1, 0.01 pounds, R1, 6 inches, and theta 1 is equal to 30 degrees, M sub 2 is 0 0.008 pounds, R sub 2 is 10 inches, and uh, theta sub 2 is 120 degrees, and R sub A here, for this one, for this uh, counterbalancing mass, is given at 9 inches, and M sub B is given at uh, 0 0.01 pounds. So, uh, looking at the side, at the axis, we have here the shaft, the length of the shaft. And we have two of the balancing planes, balancing plane A, balancing plane B, which is 9 inches apart. And M sub 1 is 6 inches away from balancing to the right of uh, balancing plane B. And M sub 2 is 6 inches to the left of balancing plane B or three inches from the right of balancing plane A. Uh, we are going to find or solve for M sub A, theta sub A, R sub B, theta sub B. So for balancing plane A, we tabulate it in the values M sub 1, R sub 1, theta sub 1, uh, M sub 2, R sub 2, theta sub 2, and then what is this B? Okay, uh, let's go back here at the, at the diagram. So this moves in this manner, M1 times 6, so 0 0.01 times 6, and this is 0 0.008 for balancing plane A, okay, uh, times 0.6, and this one is MA, uh, MA here. So if you take a look, this one here is negative, Okay, and because this counters this one, C, okay, negative. And the second one is positive, so we have uh, 0.36 and then we have 0.48, so we have uh, a net value of 0 0.0718. And for MRB sine theta, okay, you have the sign of this one. You have sine of 120 and then you take the summations 0.2357 so m sub a r sub a times c is equal to the square root of the quantity of summation mrb cosine theta quantity squared plus summation of mrb sine theta quantity squared so substituting the values R sub A, 9 inches, and uh, the C is 9, okay, M, A, M sub A, and this one is the summation, 0 0.07718 squared, 0 0.2357 squared. Go back, and we will sh I will show you. So this is 9, and this is 9, and M sub A, and 0 0.0718, 2357, okay. So we get the value of M sub A is equal to 0 0.033. Pounds. For theta sub a, we can get the tangent of theta sub a it will be negative summation of MRB sine theta all over negative summation of MRB cosine theta. So the values will be 2357.0718 and we will notice that the value of the y is negative and the value of x is also negative so it shows that it is in the third quadrant so the value of the angle will be 253 degrees 3 minutes now let us go to uh, balancing plane B okay. so this will now be your pivot and pivoting at this point will be M2 in this manner and M1 in this manner so they are in the same direction so all of them can be positive so they have 15, you, have, you know these values are given, and 15 and 3. How do you, how do you get 15? Okay, this is 15, and this is 3, okay? The distance uh, from this pivot, from M1 to this pivot, and from M2 to this pivot point here. 
Okay? And then, getting the summation, we have 0.6594 and 6578 for MRB sine theta summation. And you have, uh, you know that B is 9 inches away. Then, uh, 0 0.01 pounds MRB. So we can solve for 0 0.01 R times R sub B times 9 inches is equal to the square root of uh, the square of summation MRB cosine theta plus the square of uh, summation of MRB sine theta. And hence we can solve for R sub B is equal to 10.35 inches. And for angle of theta sub B, the negative summation of MRB sine theta all over uh, negative summation MRB cosine theta. So we substitute values. We can see that both uh, X and the Y are negative. So the angle is uh, located on the third quadrant. It is 224 degrees 56 minutes. So uh, this is in detail discussion about uh, rotating mass and balance or mass and balance in ro rotating equipment. And then for the next uh, video, I'd like uh, to invite you to watch part four of vibration analysis, a predictive maintenance tool for vibration analysis. And I would like to invite you to invite your friends to watch the channel and to subscribe to my videos at H. Machikon Mechanical Engineering channel. Thanks for watching.